Today, we are sharing James Summers' story as part of the Delaware Division of Historical and Cultural Affairs, Delaware Day 2020. James Summers, a free black man living in Kent County, Delaware in the late 1700s, was married to Judea, a woman enslaved by the Lober family and murdered Kill Hundred. In 1794, Peter Lober died and he frees Judea in his will, which should have been a happy day for both James and Judea, was bittersweet because Lober's will did not free their two children, Ruth, age four, and Thomas, approximately one year old. According to the will, Ruth was left to Peter's sister, Catherine Du Hadaway, to be enslaved until Ruth was 21 years old, at which time she should be freed. The will makes no mention of what should happen to Thomas, and it turns out he was surrendered by the heirs of Peter Lover to James Summers, but not officially freed. Despite James Summers being free, his children were born into slavery because their mother was enslaved at the time of their birth. Over the next few years, the children may have been living with their parents, possibly due to their young age. And this time, Catherine Duhadaway died in Maryland, and her possessions were broken up by her will, including Ruth. This led to James Summers entering the Recorder of Deeds office in the State House, now known as the Old State House, on October 14, 1797. He arrived to free his children. What is unclear to us at this time is how he came to own Ruth so that he could free both of his children. He must have came to an arrangement with the Lober family to purchase her either through payment or working for them. In fact, John Lober, Peter's grandson, signed the manumission document as a witness. The manumission document states for diverse considerations me, especially moving, do monument liberate set at full liberty. My affectionate children, namely Thomas Summers, who is now aged about five years, and Ruth Summers, aged seven years, on or about the 25th day of December next, that they said Thomas Summers and Ruth Summers liberated as, as for said, shall from, and immediately after the date on these presents this document, enjoy their freedom as other free citizens can or ought to do. It goes on to say they should not be harassed or put back into bondage by anyone. The entire document was written by Simon Wilson, recorder of deeds. This includes Mr. Wilson writing James Summers' name with the Mr. Summers making his mark an X, indicating that he could not read or write. That looks like a plus sign between his first and last name because he was probably at the side of the desk. Despite now being free, his children would need to keep a copy of this document or a similar official government document stating they were free in case anyone ever claimed they were slaves or even just for them to travel outside of Kent County. There are over 300 of James and Judea Summers descendants since the 1790s. If my sixth great grandfather, James Summers, did not free his children back in October of 1797, who knows if I or any of my immediate family would be here today.